Okay, okay, you guys, here's what we're going to talk about this morning. This is what was laid on my heart by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to talk about counterfeit Christianity because this is something so hurtful and detrimental to the body of Christ. Uh, th and it's going to be prevalent, especially now in the end times. You're going to see this all over the place. And you got to know what to look for. There are people out here, and it says in Revelation, many are going to come and, and say that they are, they, they are Christ, the false teachers and the false prophets, okay? We're seeing it left and right here. Here's the thing. When you are a Christian, when you proclaim that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you take into your heart that Jesus Christ, you've got the only way to get to the Father is through the Son, and Jesus Christ is the second part of the trinity there is the father the son and the holy spirit when you take that in your heart and you believe that this is true and real then this is what your goal is every single day to be more than you were the day before to be more christ-like than you were the day before it's not to be more worldly it's not to attack people it's not to call people witches and demons it's not to tell people who are lost that that they're subhumans that is not christ-like and you must understand this this is all a part of the counterfeit christianity it's all a part of the counterfeit christianity and the other thing that's going on out here these people are telling you that if you don't tithe you're going to be cursed with some curse god will not bless you or or, or these generosity preachings that you're going to be blessed as much as you give it's all counterfeit christianity now I'm going to read something to you. Gotquestions.org. Remember, I talked about that website on YouTube the other day. It's all about disseminating the Bible and answering your questions about the Bible. What, the Bible, what does the Bible say about prosperity gospel? In the prosperity gospel, also known as the word of faith movement, the believer is told to use God, whereas the truth of biblical Christianity is just the opposite. They're telling you to use God, that God will bless you as much as you give. It's counterfeit Christianity. Christianity is just the opposite. God uses the believer. We don't use God. God uses us. Prosperity theology sees the Holy Spirit as a power to be put to use for whatever the believer wills. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person who enables the believer to do God's will. The prosperity gospel movement closely resembles some of the destructive greed sects that infiltrated the early church. Paul and the other apostles we're not accommodating to or conciliatory with the false teachers who propagated such heresy. They identified them as dangerous false teachers and urged Christians to avoid them. Paul warned Timothy about such men in 1 Timothy 6 to 5 and 9 to 11. These men of corrupt mind, supposed godliness, was a means of gain and their desire for riches was a trap that brought them into ruin and destruction that was first nine the pursuit of wealth is a dangerous path for christians and one which god warns about for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil is this not everything i've been telling you guys uh, these people are still attacking me. Do you understand the darkness attacks the light? Because when their dirty deeds are brought into the light, they don't like it. They don't like it. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Verse 10. If riches were reasonable goal for the godly, Jesus would have pursued it. If riches were a reasonable goal for the godly, Jesus would have pursued it. But he did not. 
preferring instead to have no place to lay his head, Matthew 8 to 20, and teaching his disciples to do the same. It should also be remembered that the only disciple concerned with wealth was Judas. Paul said, covetousness is idolatry, which is what I said. When these people idolize wealth and idolize money more than they love God, yeah, that's a major problem. And you can't be in the world and with God at the same time. Paul said, covetousness is idolatry. Ephesians 5.5 5, And instructed the Ephesians to avoid anyone who brought a message of immorality or covetousness. Okay? And that's what that other one did. The other one yesterday that called me a demon. Okay? That's what he did. He's telling, he called those, told those pastors, don't listen to any demon who's trying to chain you up. No, no, this girl is from the light. This girl is from the light. Counterfeit Christianity is what you're looking at over there. With all of them, all of them. They're all of the world and the world belongs to Satan. This has been my message from day one. Prosperity teaching prohibits God from working on his own, meaning that God is not Lord of all because he cannot work until we release him to do so. Faith, according to the word of faith doctrine, is not submissive trust in God. Hello. Hello. What have I been saying out here? Submit, submit, submit. Faith is a formula by which we manipulate the spiritual laws that prosperity teachers believe govern the universe. Uh, these people who talk about the, he worship the one who created the universe, not the not and not what he created. And here they are; they're teaching their own false doctrine. Faith, according to the Word of Faith doctrine, is not submissive trust in God. Faith is a formula by which we manipulate the spiritual laws that prosperity teachers believe govern the universe. As the name Word of Faith implies, this movement teaches that faith is a matter of what we say more than whom we trust. Or what, or what truths we embrace and affirm in our hearts. A favorite term of prosperity gospel teachers is positive confession. This refers to the teaching that words themselves have creative power. What you say, prosperity teachers claim, determines everything that happens to you. Your confessions, especially the favors you demand of God, must all be stated positively and without wavering. Then God is required to answer as though man could require anything of God. Thus, God's ability to bless us supposedly hangs on our faith. James 4, 13 to 16 clearly contradicts this teaching. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money, why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Far from speaking things into existence in the future, we do not even know what tomorrow will bring or even whether we will still be alive. This was the verse from James that I read you last night. The Holy Spirit is moving here, people. Instead of stressing the importance of wealth, the Bible warns against pursuing it. Believers, especially leaders in the church, 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, are to be free from the love of money. Hebrews 13.5, the love of money leads to all kinds of evil. 1 Timothy, Timothy 6.10, Jesus warned, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Luke 12.15, in sharp contrast, to the prosperity gospel emphasis on gaining money and possessions in this life. Jesus said, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth 
where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Matthew 6, 19. The irreconcilable contradictions between prosperity teaching and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is best summed up in the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve both money and God. I guess these are all mammon worshipers. who are out here calling me a demon. Well, the Holy Spirit says otherwise. Let's take a look at how do we, how do we tell about false teachers? In the end times, you know there will be plenty of false teachers out here, all proclaiming that they are truly of God. What does the Bible say about false prophets? Matthew 7:15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. There's no Christian that can ever carry their weight in salt to call themselves a Christian that would be out here for months abusing a, a person and calling a person over and over again a demon and a witch. No Christian worth their salt would ever do that. That is the antithesis of Christ-like behavior. Many will come in his name. Beware of the wolf that comes in sheep's clothing and telling you to give them all your money. Send them on a world tour. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. They have gone out into the world. They are of the world. This is what I've been saying over and over and over again. They are of the world. The world belongs to Satan. Matthew 24, 24. For false, false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. Their little miracles that they're healing people and, and speaking in tongues and doing all these things means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Faith without deeds. What are the deeds? How do you treat other people? How do you treat other people? That is the first sign that you're dealing with a fake. The false works that they do, these signs and wonders, it only brings glory to themselves. But how do they treat other people? How do they treat people who can do nothing for them? This is what you have to look at. This is what you have to look at. Look at how every single one of these people have treated me. Look at how every single one of these people have talked about people from the mystics community and the occult. God help us all. If this is what uh, an, an example of what is to come, God help us all. Matthew 24, 24, the false Christ, false prophet, prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. 2 Peter 2, 1, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Repent! Or he will allow you to experience what's coming. Thus saith the Lord. 1 John 4, 1, 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. So I'm out here telling you that the only way to the Father is through the Son, that Jesus Christ must be your Lord and Savior. And these false teachers out here are consistently out here calling me a demon and a witch. Here, let me read that again. 1 John 4, 1-6. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God. It's from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is, 
that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you understand how the world keeps getting repeated in here? The world, the world. Why is that? Because the world belongs to Satan. And this is what my message has been from day one. And these people have been fighting against me because they are of the world. Because they are of the world. And they, they, they don't want their, their wolf in sheep's clothing to be brought into the light. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. Call children of God, demons and witches and tell you, go, go, make, go make a movie on Lifetime Network. Go do this. Go do that. If God really called you, send me a thousand dollars. That has nothing to do with God. Nothing. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, dis disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears and they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, to suit their own passions. Deuteronomy 18, 20 to 22, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is the word that the Lord has not spoken. And everything I have ever said has come true. Okay? The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Deuteronomy 18.20 But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Revelation 19.20 And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which... He deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Romans 16, 18. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own, ap but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts and, of the naive. Luke 6, 26. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. Got it? When people are attacking you, you are coming from the light. You are coming from the light and you're burning their eyes. You're burning their eyes. Do you understand? This is what's happening here. Jesus said that we will all be persecuted in his name. And this is what is happening here. This is what is happening. Jeremiah 14, 14, and the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them to speak them. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. It's not about these, these signs and wonders that these fakes out here are doing and, and talking about this, uh, this generosity uh, scripture that they're talking about. It is all 
uh, it is all a deceitful doctrine and it is not of God. You, God does not bless you by how much you give to anybody. God uses you. You don't use God. You do not use God. That is Satan telling you that. That is Satan telling you that. You all need to get your face in the Bible now. Get your face in the Bible now. The end times are here. And counterfeit Christianity is here now. Be blessed.